In the coming clips I will show you that uh, monotonic and bounded sequences are convergent. This is very useful to be sure that a sequence converges even though you have not calculated a limit. In order to show you the monotonic convergence theorem, we need some additional pro uh, preparations. Well, we need some preparations and these concern sets in R. So, as a first definition, we will call a set V in R. Yeah, so take any set R, the V in R, and we will discuss bounds on the set. So a set V in R is bounded from below. It is bounded from below if a number in R exists which is actually lower than any value in V. Yeah, so it should hold that for any element in V X should be larger, at least equal to M, small m, yeah, which is the same as saying that X should be at least M for all X's in V. Yeah, so if we take an infinite interval minus infinity 1, then this is not a bounded set, but the interval, close interval 0, 1 is bounded below by zero. And uh, equivalently, well, something similar is for, also for bounded from above, I will call V in R bounded from above, if a capital M exists such that for any element in V we have that X is smaller or equal than capital M. Yeah, so example, for example, if we take V is the interval left closed, right open, 0, 1. This one is bounded from above by 2. Yeah, we can just take any number larger than the 1 in V. Yeah, so there's no restriction on capital M in this sense. And it is be uh, it's bounded below by minus 1, for instance. Yeah. So these bounds are typically not tight in this sense. Yeah, so the bounds need not be tight. But of course, if we look closely at V, then we can find tight bounds. V is bounded from above by one, and we cannot pick a lower bound. Yeah, so and it's bounded below by zero. Yeah. So we have tight bounds, small m equals zero and capital M equals one. And then if V is bounded from below and bounded from above, we will call V bounded. Yeah, so V is a bounded set since it's bounded from below and above. Well, the type of bounded sets that we will discuss subsequently are given by sequences. So all elements from a sequence make up a set of numbers in R. So for instance, a n is the sequence n divided by n plus 1. And consider v is the set of all elements in this sequence. Now this set is bounded. Why is that? Well, actually, if we vary n over the natural numbers, then we immediately see that n divided by n plus 1 is always larger than 0. But also, n divided by n plus 1 indicates that actually a n is smaller than 1. So we can take capital M equal to 1 as an upper bound. 
When this set V is bounded, then we will call the sequence bounded sequence. The sequence AM is called bounded. So there's one axiom on the real numbers that is truly important for several reasons, but one uh, uh, we're going to be used here in the context of converging sequences. So if V is a non-empty set in R, so there's at least one element in V, and suppose that V is bounded from above, suppose V is bounded from above, then the completeness axiom for the real number states that there must be a smallest upper bound. Yeah, recall that actually by discussing bounds, we didn't need to find a tight bound, but this says that actually for non-empty sets, which are bounded from above, there's a least upper bound, which is called the supremum of V. Yeah, so this is the supremum, and uh, something similar holds for uh, for behavior or properties of V. If V is bounded from below, then there's a largest lower bound. Yeah, it's just the dual property of upper bound, so we have now a low bound. If we have a lower bound, then we have a largest lower bound which is called the infimum of V. For example, take a set 0, 1, so we have a left, uh, left closed set, a right open interval 0, 1. Yeah, then we may consider that this set is bounded from below and H and bounded from above and the least upper bound is one, the tight bound is upper bound is one, and the infimum is the tight lower bound, which is zero. Yeah, here notice that actually in the second case, if you look at lower bounds, we have a minimum uh, in the set zero one. But we don't have a maximum in the set 0, 1, since 1 is not included in the interval. 